everything seemed to be fine. Some kind of an issue, some kind of something related to the update. Nonetheless, we are going to get some good Dota underway with Minix Esports taking on Team Liquid. Team Liquid coming fresh off. When I say fresh, I do mean fresh off a loss to Mal Sports as they just finished up their stint in the D2L. They were part of our doubleheader today. The second part of that doubleheader, just 30 minutes downtime between the conclusion of today's D2L broadcast and now our opening broadcast on the D2L. So Meenix going to be testing their luck against the professional team Liquid Squad and really looking forward to seeing Liquid back in action. We saw them in the D2L again, unfortunately coming up short against Mal Sports. They lost that one to two. And um, but they are, you know, they are getting back in the swing of things after going to oh, going to Shanghai and uh, doing all that they did for the G1 Champions League. They nonetheless still have to find the time to find the rhythm. And I don't think that's um, I don't think any team is immune to that, no matter how good they are, no matter who you are. Even if you are a team like Team Liquid, you still have to try and find your rhythm after a period of downtime. And, you know, playing on land and playing online, two totally different things. So the last experiences they did have. Uh, nonetheless, experiences that still, like I said, they just have to settle back in, have to get back into their routine, and of course, starting to get ready for the International Three as well. You're tuned into the American Dota League. I'm here in AC Chambers. Hope you guys enjoy your time here. I want to remind you to hit follow here on twitch.tv slash American Dota League. We'd love to have you back for all of our broadcasts in the future. Take a look at the draft, see where we stand. Liquid snags themselves a bad rider after the Wisp and the Lifestealer were banned out. No Nyx or Keeper of the Light, courtesy of Liquid. They end up giving away a Magnus and a Rubik, both to Meenix, who then go ahead and pick up a Juggernaut. So they're certainly going to have a lot of team fight potential coming out very, very early. Liquid not short in punching power in the early and mid-game phase on their own right, though. They've got a bad rider, a Shadow Demon, and a Visage, and that bad rider... Of course, it doesn't get a whole lot better in terms of single target initiation, unless, of course, you include Shadow Demon, because the Shadow Demon, and I, it's really interesting when you look at the way these teams drafted. Meenix, uh, Liquid had first pick with the Bad Rider, and no surprise at all to see him snagged up quick, fast, and in a hurry when he survived the ban phase. Don't see that too terribly often, to be honest. Meenix then immediately counterpicks the Magnus and the Rubik, and Picking up the Magnus and the Rubik just takes away that counter. Doesn't give Team Liquid a chance to get the Rubik for themselves. And that's one thing that can keep Magnus at bay is the fact that Rubik, you know, at this stage of the game with so many, you know, Rubik's been around more than a year now. Players know him. They know how to, they know how to get RP. They know how to position themselves. They know they've been there. They've done that. Seconds. And they're good enough to almost always steal RP unless Magnus just hits them with something completely Five surprising. So what a lot of teams do is use the Rubik as a check or they just pick it and go, okay, that's fine. We needed a support anyway. There's our Rubik now. Good luck countering the RP. Liquid kind of did the same thing, picking up the Shadow Demon next. Shadow Demon's a phenomenal counter to Bad Rider, just disrupting the bat after he's lassoed his target. The target is still stunned, of course, but at least keeps the bat from moving him away. You can also use your ulti on him if you really want to do that instead and save your disruption maybe uh, for your own target. And uh, But yeah, so both teams taking that approach to things and both picking up some mid-game damage with the Juggernaut and the Visage. On the side of Meenix, just taking out late-game carry potential. They know what Liquid likes to run. Not going to give them the Phantom Lancer or the, uh, or the Luna. Uh, Gyrocopter banned out by Liquid as well as the Druid, so they're looking to take away any kind of late-game potential for Meenix as well. Just going to try to play this very stable and very, very calm. No TA for Liquid either. And that TA uh, is actually a really smart ban, I think, from Meenix because you look at this and remaining. your first inclination is to always say Bad Rider mid, but more and more you're seeing the bad wind up Five in the jungle and in, or remaining. in the off lane or both, you know, a hybrid between the two. And picking up a TA, then another carry would have given Liquid an absolutely devastating mid-game lineup. So if they went something like a TA followed by, oh hell, I mean, would, they have so many options available to them at this point. A lot of the major ones, Dragon Knights among them, a lot of the major ones banned down already. But yeah, if they al had allowed Liquid to get, say, a DK or any other number of heroes to go with a TA in mid and then run the Bad Rider off lane, that really could have been problematic with the Shadow Demon and a Visage already out. So Meenix drafting very, very smart. Liquid also, aside from just banning out... Um, so a good all-around heroes that Meenix could use. The Nature's Prophet would fit in with an, an offlane, which unless they plan to run the Jugger there, is still something they're going to need. Seconds, Same with the Lone remaining. Druid and the Gyrocopter, just a great carry that they didn't want to take a chance on giving Five away. Um, they're also getting rid of heroes that can push. And, you know, looking at their lineup, that is one way they, that Meenix could have potentially abused Team Liquid with that Juggernaut and with the Magnus. Juggernaut, obviously, with this healing ward, an excellent way 
to uh, to get some early good push going. Minix could still draft a Chen if they want to. Chen's still available. But, um, you know, that plus Magnus, and I talked a lot about this during the D2L broadcast. It, it is often overlooked that one of the most important parts of having a push lineup isn't just getting to the tower and having some creeps to bang on the tower. A very important part of that, especially once you start talking about potential tier two towers, is having the ability to initiate a fight on a team that is gathered up beneath their own tower. You have to have some kind of range, some kind of threat that'll make them feel uncomfortable even under their own tower. And, uh, you know, a Magnus is just perfect for that. We're going to see Minix go all in on the AOE, grabbing themselves a Warlock. Now, this is a situation where, honestly, Liquid could, could decide to offensively try lane here. And it wouldn't surprise me a lot if they did, actually. Warlock is not good in lane at all. He's a, a, a hero that works mid predominantly at the professional level. I mean, you will see him run lane support, but when you pick a Warlock, you really want him to have levels. You want that six to come out as soon as possible, and then you want to use it. He does add to the push potential of Minix, though. That Ten Golem once dropped remaining. can kill towers just as easily as it can kill heroes. So Liquid now faced with the decision. Remaining. Dragon Knight, I've seen, I think I've seen him offensively try lane once. But what they might do is pick something like an Enchantress and offensively try lane with that. Nope, they're going to get the Alchemist. So, um, But either way, the uh, the ability for Liquid to put pressure onto this lane out of Minix is going to be there. Their last pick is going to tell us a lot. Um, you know, Again, when I look at it, Magnus usually wants to go mid. Juggernaut can go in the off lane, so maybe they could still pick up another another carry here. They could end up swapping those two, having Magnus in the off lane. That, that really has gone by the wayside, though. You just don't see that all that much anymore. But uh, Meenix, nonetheless, still waiting for that last pick to come remaining. out. Now, when I look at Liquid's lineup, this is a lineup that Meenix by no means wants to go late against. Dragonite and Alchemist are absolute exactly. gigantic monsters of the late game. They work really, really well together. Dragonite deals with physical DPS as well as any hero in the game because of the mass amount of bonus armor that he gets from having uh, Dragon's Blood, of course. It's bonus 12 to that. Alchemist, extremely survivable as well. Ten seconds remaining. Thanks to his ulti. And Minix definitely taking their time here. Talking Five it over. Taking it all remaining. the way down to the wire. They're going to grab a Kunkka. Okay, so that might be their mid. I, I, honestly, with this lineup, they've got two heroes that are melee. And I, I really think Liquid's going to end up offensively trialing this. I would actually be pretty surprised if they didn't. Shadow Demon, Visage, and Alchemist can work extremely well in an offensive tri lane, lead off with the disruption from the Shadow Demon. And when you look at how the tri lane is going to look, they're going to have Telekinesis as an interrupt, maybe Torrent as well uh, from Fuzzy if he ends up there. Don't know who they're going to want to farm in that position. Would imagine. I mean, but again, Magnus. Yeah, I guess you can offlane the Kunkka too, and then they would have to farm the Juggernaut. But um, just a, a little weird. And if I'm not mistaken, Tiao is actually their carry player, at least he was, no, he was their mid player, if I remember correctly. So yeah, if he's going to be on the Magnus, that tells us he's going Ten mid. Seconds. I want to say China was actually he's farming dreaming. a Weaver last time I saw him. So we'll have to wait and see how the lanes are going to wind out here. And I'm going to hope that this Prepare works. Yep, there we go. Battle. Yeah, some kind of weird interaction with XSplit and Dota 2 right now, from the best I can tell. And I'm actually getting a fair about a amount of lag here. So I'm going to hope it's not too disruptive, but yeah, definitely just something I probably have to change in the X split settings. But anyway, they aren't going to be, yeah, they're going to farm, farming, trial lane farming the Juggernaut with the Kunkamut. So that means Tiao going to be down in the, uh, down in the off lane. And this is Chansey. And looks like Liquid had no intention of offensively try laning anyway they're just gonna try lane farm the alchemist and really given what they see i don't really blame them they have two heroes in the dragon knight and in the alchemist who are not going to be super worried about the physical damage coming out from kunkka and from juggernaut i mean they're just they're they're naturally tanky heroes who can deal with that kind of damage very very easily as we wait for the horn to get underway this mid matchup and it's funny, we saw this mid matchup exactly uh, in the last time we broadcasted the ADO, now that I think about it. We had a Kunkka versus a Dragon Knight. And not the, the oddest thing begins. in the world, but still at the same time, not what you would call a typical mid matchup. Definitely teams trying to step out of their comfort zone and try to find something new that they could fit into their playstyle. Now with the Juggernaut taking the tri-lane farm, a lot's going to rest on this Kunkka. 
Um, you know, Juggernaut taking Juggernaut is not what you would normally label a typical hard carry. I mean, he benefits from farm as much as anybody, uh, no doubt about it. But he is not necessarily a hero that you just want to sit back and farm and farm and farm. He's a hero who benefits a lot more from being active. And so, I mean, getting him off to a great start is going to help. But, I mean, especially with the Kunkka on team. And really, one of the, the strengths of Kunkka as a hero in Tiao has to be very, very careful. Trying to get close. To soak up some experience. But IX Mike right there, keeping an eye on him. And he's even going to try to block the lane a little bit. Has to be careful in doing that. Could get snagged up a little bit. But trying to come forward. Forex actually going to go ahead and drop Acid Spring. Wants to keep this out of his tower as best as he can. Yeah, he's going to stand. Face tank it after the pull here. Rom Fluff. But back to the Kunkka. With the Kunkka on team, Kunkka as a hero, one of his strengths is just how quickly he can spam Ghost Ship once he has level 6. You can see, even just level 1, 60 second cooldown is next to nothing. He can fight a hell of a lot early on. So you put him on a team with a Juggernaut, who tends to peak earlier than, sooner rather than later, I should say. Has a great skill set, so long as he has a good amount of mana, so long as he's in good shape and gets a good start, which he will be getting, obviously, up here, already up to level 3. And those two can really cause some problems for any number of teams. And you combine that with mass initiation from Magnus and from the Warlock. And you've got a lineup that's not going to be easy for Liquid to necessarily deal with. And, you know, that's discounting the Rubik, too. He's just an excellent supporter in his own right. And Rubik has some decent spells that he can steal. Haste. Breathe Fire would be an excellent for him, actually. If he could still Breathe Fire from the Dragonite, have that plus Fade Bolt to do damage. But for right now, the farm relatively... Wyatt, and looks like we're going to have a quick pause. It'll give me a chance to do something I didn't get a chance to do right when we started, which is run through our lineups. In mid, we're going to have TC, the Alchemist, going to be played by Korog Visage. Going to be handled here by Fluff. Bad Rider will be played here in the jungle by Bulba, sacking that off lane entirely. And the Shadow Demon, going to be handled by IX Mike on the other side of the river. We got Tiao playing on our Magnus Kunkka, going to be handled in mid by Fuzzy. As mentioned, we're going to have Warlock. Playing our played by, I should say, Geezy. The Rubik gonna be handled by the stand in. Stand ins in a league like this actually entertain pretty funny. But um stand in made Ned. And China, who I had mentioned last time I saw him in action played on a Weaver, will be farming up the juggernaut. Now it looks like they might potentially want to push here. Nope, they never did, and they they did actually double pull that. Thought they were going to single pull it. Some double pulling going on back here as well. We're Team Liquid, so it looks like both teams quite content to just sit by and enjoy the status quo. Farm themselves up. Korok's certainly not going to have a problem with it. Already has two points in the Grievous Greed. And probably going to continue to max that out. Fluff has gone under cover of Smoke and is moving up to mid. Hoping he can catch the Kunkka out. And Fluff staying just outside of range. Looks like he's going to go ahead and give the end around. Two points into Soul Assumption, one into Grave Chill. And now he will engage. There's the Dragon Tail and the TP there just to make sure it takes place. Here comes the TP reaction. And Breathe Fire, not enough. There's a nice Telekinesis. Now TC's in trouble. He's going to be pursued out. And a lot of... Ooh, almost got him with the Fade Bolt. So both mid-heroes having to bottle themselves back up as they're unable to do much of anything. Bulba has been doing his thing here in the jungle. He came to mid and looked like he thought about coming over, but thought better of it. Just not a lot he can contribute at level 4. But this is really where the bad rider starts to, to really jungle fast. Like Right now, he doesn't look that impressive. Level 4, he's got 500 gold. Big deal, right? But now that he has two points into both Sticky Napalm and into Firefly, his jungle speed just gets kind of insane. And over here, we're actually going to see Tiao having to eat his way through the trees. He's going to double back around, trying to juke out Mike. And skewers across. There's a disruption. And the unstable concoction follow-up will be there. He eats all that damage. That should be our first blood, and it will be. Korok puts first blood on the board. In the meantime, Menix not going to waste that opportunity to take the tier one top. And down it goes. Radiance top tower has fallen. So they end up giving up first blood, but they do take the first tower of the game. 
And Tial still just level one, by the way. This is why I don't like Magnus in the offlane. It's not very hard to zone him out like this. Especially for, for, for a professional team like Team Liquid. And they just sacrifice so much sending this mag over here. It's going to be quite a while before he feels like he's any influence in this game. I mean, he's not going to stay level one forever. At some point, the laning phase will break down. There'll be a lane that's pushed. And they'll rotate him to it. But that's only half the battle. You know, the, the idea of Mag isn't just experience. I mean, he's great with just his, his base skill set. But he does desperately need two items, Arc Boots and Blink Dagger. If he wants to skip the Arc Boots, he can do that and just get a bottle to play really, really cheap. But nonetheless, he's going to need about 2,700 gold. That's basically what you need to get Magnus to a point where he can feel like he's truly contributing to the team the way a Magnus should be. And as we can see, he's quite a ways from that. Up at the top. China finding his farm quite adequately. He's got 34 last hits. He's on par with the best on the board, which happens to be Bulba. Actually considerably ahead of that Alchemist due to Alk taking a little time off to snag a first blood. He's got his phase boots up, plus 800 gold in the bank. Question for him is going to be, does he build survivable or does he try to do something a little gimmicky? Going Drum Shadow Blade would accomplish both. And when I say gimmicky, I don't mean as in like, uh, you know, a, a goofy. Like a lot of people... When a broadcaster uses the word gimmick, they, they view it as a pejorative. They view it as a, as a, an, a way of saying goofy, um, as an example. It's not that. They're just, you know, gimmicks are not necessarily bad. Gimmicks just tend to have one purpose, and if you don't accomplish that purpose, um, then they tend to fall apart. So that's what I mean. You know, getting a Shadow Blade up on a, on a Juggernaut after drums is a little gimmicky because you're really just banking on the mid game. You're not going to be a hero who's going to, for example, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an alchemist and a DK late. You're just not. Not going to happen. So instead of scaling a little bit more stably, you just say, nope, we're just going to try to win in the, in the mid-game. So that's what I mean. Whenever I use the word gimmicky in reference to something like that. You're in mid. TC. Continuing to soak experience. He's hit level 6. We got folks from both teams looking to make something happen. The Kunkka has been spotted out. TC is going to look to pop his dragon form and get the dragon tail off. That's what he does. And they're going to try to follow it up. There's a telekinesis Disruption, though, catches him. Grave chill onto the target. A lot of damage. Here comes the boat. Boat going to split the wickets, but Fuzzy did get the buff from it, as did Ned. Running through that boat as it passed through. And now we're going to have X marks to spawn on Mike. He's brought back. Tiao is going to be there to clean this up. So Mike going to end up dead. And Neenix doing a great job of managing that gank attempt. Got to give credit where it's due. Almost killed Fluff and Bulba. Not in the best of shape there either. But Tiao finally getting some experience up to about level three and a half. But uh, yeah. Neenix, the Brazilian squad, if I'm not mistaken. Really dealing with, with all things considered, dealing with that pretty well. And not only dealing with it, but getting themselves on the board. There's another dragon tail. Ned's right behind him. And I, thought, I honestly don't know he doesn't. He can't. Six. Now there's going to be a torn. Here comes Shadow Demon. And Kunkka going to be disrupted. Not going to follow it up. Just going to try to harass him back out. He managed to do so. However, Ned has a salve for him. Very kind of his teammate. Pora continuing to solo farm. He's level 8. The mag just level 3. He really has to watch himself here. 47 last is for that alchemist. Now we're going to have the engagement on the TC. TC caught out. There's X marks the spot. And they're unable to follow it up. So just a lot of trading of the paint right now. Both of these squads doing a lot of damage, but neither really able to open up that much of a lead. The farm in general is in favor of Team Liquid. The Juggernaut sitting at the top in general, though. And I'm going to guess, yeah, it's bound to be his drum complete now. Being flown out to him. Eight and a half minute drum phase. Not bad at all. Not shabby. One more. 56 last hits at eight and a half minutes. Quite good for him. And here in mid, TC just continuing to, to soak up XP. Sometimes that's all you got to do. We'll see what he wants to build. He's got himself a bracer there. Has two thirds of his treads, if that's the direction he wants to go. But the, the miserable thing. Oh, there we go. 
forgot about that. I was just using the D2L. Bat Rider did just pick up his Blink Dagger, so a sub nine minute Blink Dagger on the bat. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. He seemed rather barren, but once a Bat Rider in the jungle hits level four ish, is when he just takes over. You can just stack and stack and stack those hard camps and melt them down very easily. And that's exactly what Bulba did. Getting himself a really nicely timed Blink Dagger. And he's going to look to put it to work. As he shows up here in mid, going to try to gank out this Kunkka. Kunkka sitting at 34 last hits to the 43 of the Dragon Knight. This will not help his farm, though, as he's picked off by Bulba. Fluffs there, and the Dragon Tail to follow it up. It's feeling quite tanky, but not going to be able to do much of anything. So wave goodbye. Two to one. Liquid takes down the mid-hero of Phoenix. And now looking to take the mid-tier one. Reaction here as well from IX Mike. He'll soak up some much needed experience. Be very happy to take that as he's just short of level six. And we're going to have a quick disconnect. So hopefully, while well, Fluff back, Fluff actually had a connection problem in our first game of the day as well. Or first game of the day. Our second series in the D2L. First time I saw them, Fluff was having a connection problem, so... Hopefully, he'll be rejoining us momentarily. And we'll take this opportunity to thank you guys for tuning in to support the American Dota League. Team Liquid, the pride of North America. One, one of three teams that can lay claim to that. Evil Geniuses and Dignitas being the other two. Taking on Menix. And Menix, if I'm not mistaken, is a Brazilian squad. So, really fun to get to know them and get to know, hopefully, the South American viewers. I want to get to know more of you guys. I really, really do. Um, one of the things I love so much about the Dota scene is how truly global it is. I mean, you could talk a lot about the, the global scene for most esports, but Dota just has a different feel. I don't know how to explain it. When I watched StarCraft or when I was a part of that scene, or when I watched, uh, uh, whenever, you know, whenever I watch League of Legends, yeah, and I do watch League of Legends. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't watch it a ton, but I try to keep up with the big events at least as poorly as I do in that regard. Just not enough hours in the day. Dota eats about 18 of them a day. But um, it, 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 those communities very, very much global and international too. I don't know if, if it's because Dota feels more tight-knit or if it's because maybe the, the players just interact with each other a certain way or what. But the others seem really concentrated. And I'm sure there are fans from every country under the sun um, for even Counter-Strike and Quake and you know, you can go down the list of all the big ones. But Dota in particular, any given stream, no matter if there's 100 people or 100,000 people, you say what country you're from, you get 100 plus different answers. And I absolutely love it. And unfortunately, a large group of the community that I, I haven't had uh, a lot of time to get to know is the South Americans, the Brazilians in particular. <laughs> and I, I like these guys too. Uh, uh, at the end of the last game, they made some way way jokes. And being Brazilian as they are, it, it's nice to see them have that sense of humor. But uh, really nice guys, really damn good at Dota. As we can see, certainly hanging with Team Liquid 10 minutes into this game. Much better than most of us could do. And still waiting on that first big upset. Granted, we are in the first week of the, D, of the ADL. So, no idea if and when it'll come. But a league like this... Everybody plays everybody. Someone's going to get upset. You're going to see one of these big teams lose. And I know yesterday, I want to say, yeah, it was Dignitas versus Meenix yesterday. I think one rare won you 123 rares or something like that. Like, if you bet one rare on Meenix on Dota 2 Lounge um, in that match, I think you won literally 120-some rares in exchange or something like that. So, all of you gamblers out there, keep up the good work. Keep up the effort. We'll see, because uh, one of these teams is going to upset one, uh, one of the others. It's just going to happen. And hopefully you guys will excuse me having to take a drink from time to time. It's not something I ever do on air normally, but this is now, let's see, this is now my sixth game in a row I've solo casted today. And with two more to go on the ADL, just trying to keep the old whistle wet. But there's Fluff. So we will be back underway in just a moment. And here we go. Liquid. After their pickoff there in mid. 
work on bringing down the tier one, and they'll be able to do so pretty easily. Up here atop, Shadow D. Hanging out there, giving the stink eye to China. He's got a thousand gold in his inventory. Did complete his drums. Now the question becomes, what does he grab next? Korok actually went Midas. That's fun. Alchemist with the Midas is kind of nutso. This is how you get those 1,000 plus of GPM games. And sure, Fluff wouldn't mind that. Geezy is level 6 now. Now, this is very important. Um, Warlock in a lot of ways, like Brewmaster. And the way he feels and plays within a game. He's a very strong anchor hero. He's a great follow-up initiation, even a great initiator on his own. Though he's not one to build a Blink Dagger or anything because of the wind-up on Chaotic Offering. But we're likely to see it here. And Tiao eats some damage. Here comes the TP. There's the X marks the spot. Good skewer. And Korok brought back. Korok skewered back by Tiao. Very nice play off of X marks the spot. And here comes TC. He's going to go on Tiao. Tiao lay and caught with the Dragon's Tail. And I think TC realizing just how far out of position he is. I, I didn't even hear the ulti go down from Geezy, actually. Must have gone down to the front of the fight. Nonetheless, Nenix leading this game gets the deny on the tower. And they're up four to three. Very nice play there. And that's something, you know, I've only casted Kunkas a few times. But seeing Kunka, X marks the spot a hero, and then Mag to skewer them back is actually really cool. That is really, really creative and really smart and fun to see. And I want to say it was Meenix. I'm almost positive it was Tiao last time who was playing on uh, the Kunka, not Fuzzy. Could be wrong, but I think it was. And, yeah, Korok just blew himself up. But, um, he was doing some really cute stuff with X marks the spot and Shadow Blade. And Meenix not going to let up. They're going to smoke right into the enemy jungle. And they're going to have a chance to catch a couple of heroes here. Up, oh, never mind. Liquid gonna smoke up as well, so they're gonna be two ships passing in the night. As Meenix running is four, so has a chance to catch Fluff. Shadow Blade is the item choice for the Alchemist, and now Fluff likely to be in a bit of trouble. They're gonna try to take Fluff and then just take this tower. However, the Visage Familiars are up, so he may have a chance. Doesn't have a TP though. He may have a chance to delay this if not completely safe and he's gonna go I don't he may go for the night glyph used sitting waiting just south and yeah Ned knows it gonna go hunting for him and found him there you go managing to steal and he got two familiars of his own now there we go skewering in Ned's in trouble but still alive at least for the moment here comes the counter initiation out of liquid there's a lasso RP goes off Tiao eating a lot of damage. They're all burning to death in Bulba's Wake of Flame. IX Mike now. There's a nice X marks the spot, and Mike gonna end up dead because of it. Meenix has just lost their first one. Beautifully timed, unstable concoction from Korok, chopping away at Geezy. He'll be added to the kill list, and now Bulba pursuing out Fuzzy. Fuzzy not gonna get away. Flame Break seals the deal. And China next on the list. As Korok pursues him out, not going to be able to throw out the unstable concoction. Should have thrown it much earlier, I think. But nonetheless, Liquid manages to, if not save their tower, at least redeem it. I actually didn't see if it was denied or not. We're going to have another quick pause. Game of pauses. 12 kills on the board, though, in a 14-minute game. Roughly 14 minutes. And Meenix going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Team Liquid squad, who, again, fresh back from Shanghai and their appearance in the G1 Champions League Grand Finals. 5,000 gold right now in favor of Team Liquid. The experience up in that vicinity as well. Right around 3,000. So even though Meenix on the scoreboard at least, hanging in, Korok's farm beginning to really kick in. And you know, it, it, something that, you know, I don't think comes as any surprise, but we're beginning, like, it's one thing to theory craft it and to pretty much assume it, and another to just flat out see it. Last couple of days, this is our third ADL broadcast. The biggest thing that separates professional teams, it seems, is how much farm they're able to gain while still accomplishing other things on the map. Because this is a common sight. This this has been the site for most in most games where it's two where it's, where it's a professional team versus an up and coming team like Meenix. Is Meenix is not doing bad so far as being active, so far as ganking, accomplishing secondary and tertiary goals across the map, so on and so forth. But where they suffer 
is they're doing all that and not getting farmed. Whereas Team Liquid is managing to smoke, is managing to accomplish things, but managing to manage the farm much more effectively. And because of that, they have three of the top four farmers on the board, and not by some small margin. Kunkka is just about tripled up by Korok right now. And the highest on the entire board right now for Menix, the Juggernaut, who had free farm to start just like the Alchemist. He's being almost doubled up. Korok will be spotted. This will certainly help. He is shadow bladed. And they're continuing the chase him. Do they have detection? Don't think they do. Nope, they don't. They were just guessing where he was going. So Korak able to make it away. Need to buy dust, guys. Need to buy dust. TC making good progress towards that BKB. And this is this is where Dragonite just becomes an unholy terror. He's already got, we take a look, maxed out Dragon Blood, just one point in the Dragon's Tail. He's going to have a BKB not too long from now. Needs about 1,900 gold to finish it, give or take. And when he gets that up, his armor is already crazy high. His armor is already 20. So he's going to have that. He's going to have the additional survivability that comes from a BKB naturally. Then he's going to have magic immunity. How in the hell does Meenix cope with that? They're going to have some decent right click out of Kunkka and some decent right click out of Juggernaut. But again, that's hard countered by his very passive. They have RP and Chaotic Offering, which do stun through BKB. But you stun him, then you can't hurt him. And that's going to be his job for the most part. That's going to be DK's number one mission. It's to manage these fights. I often refer to him that way. He's not so much a carry that just goes bonkers like an anime or even a gyro cop. He's just this unbelievably hard to budge anchor hero in, in a lot of teams. So Mike actually caught out doing some aggressive warning. Going to be punished for it. And still being pursued. Ned Ned's dead, baby. Ned's dead. I should have said, see, I should have saved that, damn it. I'll say it next time. I'm going to hope there's viewers who show up and didn't hear me just do that. But yes, Ned gets the kill. But uh, 17 minutes in, 13 kills on the board. And Meenix doing their best. Unfortunately, again, just that consistent growth and the golden experience that so often differentiates professional teams from amateur teams. Rearing its head as they get near a 10,000 gold advantage. See, old Ned has had a pretty good game, sitting at 3-1. and 3-1 and one on our Alchemist as well. 2-1 and one on the DK. Everyone else, just a grab bag behind that. Liquid managing to take down yet another tower. That's the last remaining Tier 1 still standing for Menix. And Menix wants to even that score up. Cal playing real chess down there. His big old horn up. A little too deep, I do believe. Looks like Liquid's ready to fight. Massing up here in mid. Perhaps looking to counter push. Menix wisely withdraws. Healing Ward is down. Now they have two great initiation spells. Mag though. And this is where it hurts you so much. I just noticed their courier died at some point. But um like that happened earlier today, too. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's just the volume I have. Just don't hear the announcer say it that often. But at any rate. They do withdraw, and with having Mag off to such a poor start, just level 8. You take a look at the levels. He's actually not the bottom. Visage, Shadow Demon, and Rubik are at the bottom right now. But still, working his way to a Blink Dagger, and not having it really is hurting him. And Fuzzy's in some trouble. Fuzzy, can he catch him? He can. Threw that from downtown. Absolute max duration. Here comes the Juggernaut. Korok's just going to rush in, going to work, and getting the kill easily. Now, the Juggernaut going to be lassoed back. He's Blade Fury. Doesn't much matter. Visage Familiars are there. Misses with the stun, though. And there's the Chaotic Offering. Caught everyone. Beautiful play with the RP. And Meenix dropping the hammer on the professional squad. Oh, Meenix. Brazilian pride right there, gentlemen. Liquid getting a little overzealous in their pursuit. And made to pay the price. Magnus, right place, right time, getting the job done. And that at least stops the bleeding. Not going to say they're back in the play, but they got my blood pressure up. Beautifully played by Menix. And again, Liquid just overstaying their welcome quite a bit.
Phoenix does get their courier back up and running. And he actually had a, quite a lot on him. Had Assange on him for China. That's an interesting decision. Guess gonna go S and Y or perhaps Halberd. But in the meantime, that alchemist finishes up his assault cuirass. And now it's reaching that point where, I mean, the alchemist alone is just gonna be too huge or too terribly long. I mean, with that Midas, his levels have been out of control. Levels for Liquid as a whole are out of control. And his farm is just going to be going complete eight. Arnie with another thousand gold in his inventory. And Liquid really with control of this game well within their grasp. Back to Menix, we saw right there just how well things can work out whenever everything comes together. So they're they're down, but they're not out yet. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. They're going to be forced to react. Liquid, though, as they push the bottom tier two. There's VK with his VKB. Tao going to be lassoed back and going to be blown up. Not a whole lot that can be done there. Juggernaut doing what he can. Chaotic Offering should still be on cooldown. There's the boat, though, crashing through. That catches a couple. And they're going to continue to pursue this out. Fuzzy eating the majority of the damage. There's a disruption. We can see TC's VKB paying for itself. The rest of Phoenix wants to re-engage. Here comes Tiao. Ready to fight again. He's got an RP, but going to be stunned out and killed before he can use it again. 10 to 12. Kill score is close. Gold graph, not so much. And this may be the beginning of the end. As we see Liquid rushing. Tier 3. Kunkka. And the Magnus both down. Not a lot is going to be done to prevent it. Actually, I lied. Apparently, they are just going to rush him out. I'm actually really surprised Liquid pulled back there. I thought they were going to pull back, regroup, win on a creep wave. But just assuming the timing, saying nope, would rather not take the chance. Liquid does withdraw. Take a look at that alchemist. 2,700 gold in the bank. And at this point, he can go anything he wants. He can bank up for a Radiance, get an Abyssal Blade. It really just doesn't matter. He is just so huge and going to continue to get huge. Hell, you can get a BKB if you really wanted to. Just to be able to cleave them up. And not have to worry about it. And he's going to grab a Basher, actually. So, Abyssal Blade probably going to be the choice in the long term, anyway. Meenix not about to give up the ghost. Pushing down to the tier one mid. Flame break, little flame trail. Making it a little bit more difficult to take this tower. Lift the lane things a bit. And in the meantime, Korok split pushing top. His team able to hold the tier one mid. Chaotic Offering off cooldown now. Has RP back up. Still lacking a blink tag. Radiance middle tower is under attack. But the tier one will end up dropping. Is under attack. And Liquid not looking to counter initiate middle at all. Tower has fallen. This kind of lets it go. Just letting Korok continue to farm his butt off. Little short of a third of the way. Towards his relic for his Abyssal Blade. Fuzzy in the meantime, still working on the Shadow Blade. Got a ways to go, though. About 900 gold. And Mike picked up a gem, so looking to put Menix into the dark. Now, I mean, one thing Menix has going for them, we saw it right there in this bottom tier three, the fact Dyer's that Liquid did withdraw. As far ahead as Liquid is, they do have a very tough team to crack. Engaging into an RP and into a Chaotic Offering is just stupidly difficult. So hard. And Liquid not about to be the first professional team to throw a game here in the ADL. Playing it much more smart. Menix has smoked. Looks like they make smoke in a roche. They poke their nose. They see the visage from it. And they are going to hang back. Not going to reveal themselves. Liquid in the meantime moving through their enemy jungle. And Menix going to take themselves an ancient stack. Juggernaut actually completed his own Sanjinyasha. I thought that was heading to Fuzzy, so it looks like he was the one building the S and Y. And now working on a Scepter. As he's picked up the point booster and the Ogre Club to follow it up. Get those extra jumps. On the ulti, great way to scale in. 
into the later game. And poor Ned. Here we go. Now I get to say it. Ready? Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ned's dead. Ned's dead. All right. Anyway, you're in the pit. They are going to engage. Here come the Vistage Familiars. Get off the stun on all three. There's the blink away, but Geezy grabbed by the lasso. In the meantime, the boat flows through the pit. Liquid. Let's see who got it. And Magnus actually snatched the Aegis of the Immortal. Immediately popped out. Chaotic Offering going to be melted down immediately as well. So Tiao going to go ahead and spin the RP because A, why not? Did get the Aegis, so at the very least, Liquid unable to, unable to take that away from them. But... Given the game said snatched. Oh, bad Rider actually got a kill. Here. But uh, given the game said snatched, that means that Liquid did get the last hit on Roshan. And again, the golden experience just getting a bit overwhelming. Abyssal Blade done on the Alchemist now. 12,000 experience going the way of Team Liquid. Along with a massive coming up on 20,000. And Ned, I think he just got trolled. Who has a four staff? Yeah, Bulba just trolled him. <laughs> just four staffed him into their uh, into their team. And this should be two sets of racks, I would imagine. They spent everything they had, RP and chaotic offer, trying to. Yep, there it is. So the GG comes out, and our first game of the day goes in the books in short order. Had a few pauses that drug things out a little bit. But for the most part, I want to say that's, you know, I mean, we can look at the graphs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, I want to applaud Phoenix. I want to applaud all of these teams in the ADL for, for being willing to test their metal against these professional squads. I absolutely love it. And I'll tell you what's going to be great is right now we're still very early. We're going to see a lot of these teams just getting, you know, blown up, getting pretty, uh, pretty abused by the professional squads. But what's gonna end up happening is in a couple of weeks, we're all of a sudden gonna start seeing these teams like Meenix, like uh, typical mistakes, like, well, other squads I haven't even seen yet. But these teams who are starting out fairly well against, uh, against teams like the, against teams like Team Liquid, we're gonna see them all of a sudden start to do a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And what's going to end up being the net result is someone's going to get upset. And these teams are going to improve immensely in the process. So much fun to watch. So much fun to see. And so much fun to have each and every one of you guys here. I'm Aaron AC Chambers. Game one of the ADLs in the books. Team Liquid making their ADL premiere today. They have one more match coming up later. That'll be the third match of the night. Meenix going to be back in action in our second match of the day. Coming up next. Stick with us.